Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now today I want to talk to you about a great little Android TV launcher I found. It has got some very cool features, including some features that I've never seen in an Android TV launcher before. Okay, so currently this is your typical home screen on your NVIDIA Shield. And of course you've got your ads on your home screen, minimal functionality, with nothing new to offer for years. And just like that, this is the new home screen I'm talking about. So at first glance it looks rather cluttered, but me personally, I'm a fan of that. The more information I can cram in one space, the better. So let's go through what we're getting here. With so much eye candy, where do I begin? If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Starting with the obvious, we've got a live video and news feed here at the top and you can scroll across to view various videos. Now this feed can be customised and I'll show you how to do that later in the settings. Below that we've got our list of most used apps which is a great feature as it saves you going into the apps folder, which is on a different screen. And below that we've got most played radio stations. Yes, you heard me right, most played radio stations. This launcher has got a built-in internet radio. How cool is that? And you can select the registration right from your home screen here. You can pause and play it from the widget here and click on the radio icon for more settings. Now, of course, there is a paid version where you can add more radio stations to the home screen. Now, the cool thing is there's actually a five band stereo graphic equalizer. And even cooler, you can store five presets. So you can change the way it sounds depending on what you're playing. Now below that, we've got a whole host of radio categories we can choose from. And some of these categories I've not even heard of. And by selecting one of these categories, it delves even further into that category, giving you individual radio stations. So that was a UK mainstream, and this is a top 50. And as you can see, it's a massive selection, catering for everyone's tastes. Okay, while we're here, let's try one. Uh -oh. Now there is also a search function which is pretty self-explanatory, just put in what you're looking for and it will bring up all the stations for that search pretty promptly. Okay, back up and below that we've got a list of our connected devices. Okay, going back over to the top, we've got a weather widget here showing you an 8 day weather forecast. Don't ask me why it's not 7, maybe the developer works an 8 day week. And one of the main features that drew me to this Android TV launcher, we've got an internet radio player widget. From this widget you can play and pause the current radio station you've got selected. Above that we've got access to voice control where you can control your device with your voice. And while we're here let's quickly go over the top icons. These are basically shortcuts to the main settings page. You've got your location setting, your weather widget setting, your radio internet widget setting, your Wi-Fi settings and your clock settings. Now all the way across on the left you can access the main settings page by clicking on the super smart icon. So let's take a closer look at the voice control. So the first time you go to use it, you're going to get a security warning from Android TV. Click yes to allow Smart TV to record audio. And to use voice control, simply click on the microphone and say something like open YouTube. And it literally is as simple as that, guys. OK, jumping back onto the home screen, I wonder if you've noticed this. Something that happens when I scroll through the live video and news feed. Can you see what's happening to the wallpaper? It's actually mirroring the thumbnail of the video I'm currently hovering over. So this feature is called the dynamic wallpaper and if you don't like it, you can change it back to normal in the settings menu. Now personally, I think it helps as those thumbnails are pretty small and hard to see. Now jumping across in the top left hand corner, we've got the home thumbnail and if we click on it, we can access all our apps. And I do like the way this is laid out as it's small and compact and you can see everything. Now we've got a few smart features here for filtering the apps. You can filter them alphabetically up or down or you can order them in the most frequently used apps. You can also search for a particular app in the search bar here. So whichever way you look at it, you're covered in the apps department. Now the other thing I want to touch on just in the home screen is this little news feed you get here. It's pretty cool and it covers a wide range of news, which you can also filter in the settings menu. Okay, while we're here, let's test the radio station out. Okay, I don't want to play too much for copyright reasons, but how cool is that? You can have that playing in the background while you're maybe looking at some news. So back on this live video and news, did I mention you can also get YouTube videos and if you are signed in, you'll get your YouTube feed. So for example, let's look at The Flash, the official trailer. That movie looks like a cross between Batman and Superman to me. Okay, so that is pretty cool and all this from your home screen. Now some of you out there might not like the way this looks to you. Too much information bombardment and a lot of clutter. Or you just might fancy a change and a simpler look one day. And to change all this layout, all you need to do is head on over to the settings by just clicking on the super smart text. Okay, in here we can customize the home screen in a number of interesting ways. So first of all, let's scroll down to appearance. And what we can do is turn off that dynamic wallpaper. 
So straight away in the background, you can see it's gone to a default picture and it's not using the thumbnail of the video. Now we can also turn off the dynamic desktop and straight away you can see the home screen becomes a lot more simpler and we don't have that little news feed to the left of the screen. And the weather widgets become a lot more bigger and clearer and generally overall the home screen has become simpler and clearer. Okay, let's pop back into the settings and see what else we can change. So back under appearance, I'm going to turn on the dynamic desktop because I like it. So we've also got settings for adjusting font sizes to fit. And what this does is adjust the sizes of the fonts for apps and the radio names to fit their container boxes. So we get a slicker, smarter, tidier look. Now the next setting below is show app usage. Now I don't know if you noticed before, but on each app icon there's a little number with the label times used. And you've guessed it, it tells you how many times you've used the app. So turning this off, we'll take that off the thumbnail. Now the next setting below that is show connected devices. And this toggles the connected devices row on and off on the home screen. And then we've got the setting for show most used apps. And again, that's our extra row we've got showing us our most used apps on the home screen, giving us that quick access to them. Now the next setting we can change is the voice commands and radio. And from here we can clear the radio history, which clears the most recent played and recent stations from the home screen. We can also remove the most played radio row. And again, we can remove the recently played radio row. And finally, show radio station stats. So this is basically information on the thumbnail of the radio station about how many people are basically listening to that particular radio station at that current time, which I think is quite useful because A, it tells you how popular that station is and B, it gives you an indication of how easy it is going to be to stream that station because as we all know, bandwidth is important. So let's see what happens when I turn off that recently played stations and as expected, the recently played stations row is gone and we get that much less cluttered home screen. Back in the settings menu, this next setting, news and video, definitely makes a big impact on how the home screen looks. Now in here we can turn off the show news and videos, which is the main big bar of media across the home screen. So if we do go ahead and turn that off, you're going to see a big difference in the home screen. And straight away, we've got another look to our home screen. And personally, it's one of my favourite looks with this launcher. It's got everything I need on screen, and if I need to see any videos, I can just go into the YouTube app. Now back in the news and video settings, we've got options to turn off the auto scroll which basically stops the thumbnails from scrolling across the screen. I personally find the scrolling quite useful. Below that, we've got the option to show default videos. We can turn that off. And these default videos are popular videos from the categories you can select below. The next setting below allows us to turn off the show live videos, which you can also choose from the categories below. So there's three types of category you can change for your video streams. And depending on what you choose, is gonna end up on your thumbnails on your home screen. And the first category is the featured news, and the choices are food, health, politics, science, sports, technology, and world, which pretty much covers everything. And the next category we can choose topics for is news. And basically they're the same categories. And the last category is video category. And here the topics change to film and animation, music, pets and animals, sports, travel and events, gaming, video blogging, people, comedy, and entertainment. Okay, so I've chosen technology, entertainment, and gaming for my three categories. So my live video and news category will be narrowed down to these three categories. So taking a look at my feed, you can see I've got gaming, entertainment, and technology on my feed. Now back to settings, and the next setting we're looking at is clock. And pretty straightforward this one, just changing your clock settings. The next one is language, where you obviously change your language. And I've just left it at automatic. You can change your location manually, so you can get the weather reports accordingly. Now getting this TV launcher is pretty straightforward. Just head on over to the local Google Play Store and type in Super Smart TV Launcher. And it should be the first one that pops up. Just select it. And that's the one guys. Now I've already got it installed, so all I need to do is open it up. Okay guys, if you found this video helpful, please do give it a like and consider subscribing for more great content. And if you're in the mood for more, click on one of the thumbnails here. You might like this video coming up.